Let's talk about the history of the hottest topic, the thing that has fundamentally changed the way that we live today. Progress comes at a cost, and as human beings evolved to walk on two legs, they developed more pronounced butt cheeks and lost the ability to not have to wipe like the rest of the four-legged animal kingdom. Early humans cleaned with their non-eating hand and basically whatever they could find. Water, rags, rocks, wood shavings, plants, fruit skins, corn cobs, and even seashells. While the ancient Greeks used broken pieces of clay pots, the Romans used a sponge on a stick soaked in vinegar called an expedangium, expandium, exilospongium, which was shared with the whole community. Now, this wouldn't be an invention history if I didn't mention the Chinese, who used paper with the express purpose to wipe all the way back into the 500s. Now, we know this because it surprised Middle Eastern visitors who were still using the water in hand method. By the 14th century, China was mass producing paper with the express purpose of wiping. Yet, news of this innovation didn't spread to Europe who continued to rough it. Yet upper class people could afford fabric, like Henry VIII, who preferred linen. Thanks to Gutenberg and his printing press, by the 1800s, the written word had spread throughout the world, and with it, information. And a new way to wipe, paper. Junk mail proved especially useful for this purpose, and nothing more than the massive Sears catalog, which could provide you something to read and wipe with for months. In England, some people still use the word bump for junk mail, which is short for bum fodder. In 1857, an American named Joseph Gaiety started mass producing a softer paper aimed at preventing hemorrhoids, which is not surprising considering what people have been wiping with for millennia. He was so proud of his invention that he printed his name on every single sheet, which sounds like another New York businessman. Paper took its next step forward in 1890 when two brothers, Clarence and E. Irving Scott, invented the idea of putting toilet paper on a roll. The Scott's brand became slightly more successful than the Gaiety's medicated wipes because they came up with the strategy of selling directly to hotels and drugstores. But both of these companies weren't exactly runaway hits because it was so hard to market to uptight, puritanical Americans who had a hard time even thinking about what toilet paper could be used for, let alone going into a store and saying the words toilet paper to another human being to buy it. People were so embarrassed to talk about what toilet paper was used for that many of them continued to use the Sears catalog in shame for decades. So many people that in the 1920s when the department store switched to a glossy, less absorbent kind of paper, they received a flood of complaints. But in 1928, the Hoburg Paper Company finally cracked it. On the advice of their ad men, instead of releasing a product called Hoburg Paper, they released a brand called Charmin, which had a feminine logo depicting a beautiful woman. Now people just had to go to a store and ask for Charmin. Hey, do you have any Charmin? No? Okay, think for a moment. In the commercials, have you ever seen the Charmin bears use the product? No. Because if a bear poops in the woods, no one wants to see that. Since then, toilet paper has remained relatively unchanged, minus a few plies or two and these new mega rolls, but the Western world still uses this very design. Meanwhile, in Asia, AKA the future, they've moved on to more elaborate systems that are computerized, that play music, that warm you, but really they're just using water all over again, just like our ancestors did. And the cycle of progress continues. <laughs>